Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Um, you guys are here live on the Dixie Belle Paint Facebook page. My name is Brandy. Um, I am with Brushed by Brandy and you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and YouTube. And I am a Dixie Belle Paint brand ambassador. Um, I paint with you guys live every Thursday evening here. Um, and I put a poll out onto my page today um, to ask what you guys wanted to learn about. And the result was overwhelmingly that you guys wanted to do patina Florida. tonight. Yeah, floor tile. But choices were to either learn how to paint floor tile or to do um, patina planters. So these are the planters we're going to work on. The patina went out overwhelmingly. But everybody wins because I did decide to pre-record the floor tile videos. And those are going to go up on my YouTube channel. So I'm working on that at the same time. Yes. <clears throat> I know. Everybody wins here at Brush by Brandy. Um, you guys, you might hear my husband, Sean, in the background. He's here tonight to help answer questions. So pop on as we go, and I'll answer any questions you have. Um, Sully Joseph, hey. Hi, Sully. How are you? Yay, Sully's here. Um, Sully Joe, you guys, is with Would You Bend. Um, she's not with Would You Bend. She is Would You Bend. <laughs> Sully, we know you would bend. Um, and I'm working on a Would You Bend project actually right behind me. But uh, what I want to show you guys tonight is these here. And these are kind of funny because if you guys follow my page, you know that we um, built our house this last year. We bought a five acre lot, vacant lot, and we designed our home with an architect and we had a contractor build it to a shell and then we moved in and we started doing all the finish work ourselves. Still not 100% complete, but that's our story. Um, so these planters are something that I got off Marketplace and I want to say I paid like $10 each for them you and they're really... Them? They're big, I know. But they sat on the side of our construction for like a year waiting for me to tackle them. When I got them, they were super sad, you guys. Um, Tracy says this is her first Facebook Live video ever. Yay! Hi, Tracy. That's exciting. Um, it's my first one, too. <laughs> Just kidding. So um, so I got these for really inexpensive. Now, if you guys shop for these, they're, they're expensive planters. They had topiaries that were, they're, I mean, they're like eight foot tall topiaries that are. And my house has big arched iron doors. So they're like a bronze finish, but huge iron doors on it. So I wanted to put these to flank either side of my really pretty iron doors, but they look terrible. So they had this like faux juniper on them. And it was in really sad condition. So I peeled it all off to get to this metal um, structure that was underneath. And I am replacing it. I ordered these, um, these are just garland. And I ordered the garland and I'm putting all new greenery on them. And I wanna also refinish the pot. So that's the story with these. So what am I using? Um, I'm gonna use Dixie Bell Patina Paint. So if you guys know what patina paint is, patina paint um, comes in three colors. It comes in iron, bronze, and copper. And it's a paint, but it has actual metal particles inside the paint. So when you spray it with a reactive spray, it reacts with the metal in the paint and creates a chemical reaction. So for example, if you use the iron, when iron weathers, it creates rust. Um, it also comes in copper. When copper weathers, it creates really a green verdigris finish and then bronze creates uh when bronze weathers it's nice and blue and rich um so i'm actually going to use the bronze because that matches with the color of my front doors well we got a couple of shout outs from nova scotia Ooh. uh new zealand wow <coughs> worldwide in the house hi guys um so while i'm painting tonight we're going to watch we're going to keep an eye on this and what this is is a sample board that i made just a little bit ago and um, I'll hold it up, but I, I only sprayed this probably about 15 minutes ago. So this is the iron patina over here, and it's reacting. This is hold the on one second. Can you pitch, pitch it just like there, that. right there? Right there, yep. right there, right there, there. No? Okay. <laughs> this is the iron on the side. This is the copper in the middle, and then this is the bronze. And then on each one, on the right-hand side, I've got the blue spray. On the left-hand side is the green. Um, so they're all side-by-side -side examples, and they're going to slowly weather as we're going here tonight. Um, but you'll see the colors that start coming out when you put the two different sprays, the blue and the green, which each with each of the paint colors. So um, right off the bat, I can tell you that iron patina paint takes longer to react than the other colors. And you can see that on here. It hasn't even started. So this is about 15 minutes in. You can't really see anything. 
Um, each one takes about overnight to get the full um, reaction, but the iron just, it's a, it's a late bloomer. It just doesn't start. It doesn't go as quickly as the other colors. The other thing about the iron is, um, iron special for a couple things. It takes longer to react. The paint itself doesn't get as good of coverage. So you really want to do a base of another Dixie Belle color under the iron. Um, if you're going to add rust to your paint finish, a couple colors that work really well are a base of Dixie Belle, um, um, gravel road, coffee bean, chocolate, anything like that. You might see a little bit of it through your rust finish. So you probably want a little bit of a darker color. So just for my own sake is like that side of the board, like the male side, it just takes longer, just a little slow, a little, yeah, slow. Needs a little, a little help along the way somewhere, okay. you know, it needs a good woman. <laughs> Um, um, the copper and the bronze get really good coverage. The paint itself gets really nice coverage. You'll see when I'm painting these tonight. So you can actually use the copper and the bronze themselves without the reactive spray for just a painted finish. And they don't necessarily need another color underneath them either. So I'm going to set this aside. We'll come back and take a look at it in just a little bit as those continue to react. But I can tell you right now, if we look at the bronze, for example, you can already see the colors coming out. So this is the blue spray here, and I can see the blues coming out in the corner. And then here with the green, it's a little more green. It's almost a white that it turns in the bronze. On the copper, it's really green. It's really a green reaction. And then um, the blue, it's just more of a teal color. So those are a little bit more slight difference. You're going to notice a bigger difference in the iron. Iron reacts better with the green spray. It doesn't do a whole lot with the blue. It stays in the in the gray tones almost. Um, so we'll me. keep coming back to that. But I'm coming to my planters. Now, if you're using patina paint, um, there is something called Prime Start. And what Prime Start is, is it's a base. If you want to put patina paint on metal. So an example would be this is just a watering can I got at the dollar store. Um, but if I wanted to paint this in patina paint, I would want to start with Prime Start because it's metal. Um, and what it does, Prime Start just creates a barrier to keep your patina paint from going through to the metal underneath the paint. Um, and that's, for example, if you're putting rust on, it's going to keep the rust from going through and corroding the metal underneath my paint. So um, because these are resin planters, I don't need to start with Prime Start, but if you're, if you're doing this on metal, start with your Prime Start. So this is my bronze patina paint, and I'm gonna put it on with my flat, large brush. And these are going outside my house. Whoops, I just dripped onto my sample board. Oh, I can't take you anywhere. Actually though, that's the bronze went onto the bronze, so at least that happened. I'm gonna move this a little bit. But I'm just gonna start laying this paint on, and I just wanna get good coverage. You can see right away, this is resin. It's kind of a black resin. My board's gonna be kind of wobbly. Um, but I don't need a base underneath underneath this paint. It gets really good coverage. I cleaned these because they've been <laughs> sitting outside for a while. June asked, are they from Costco? <laughs> they, they might be, I don't know. Um, I got them off Facebook Marketplace. Do they look like a Costco item? I could use one of these from Costco actually. So I almost threw these away because they were so sad looking. And Sean's over here like, damn, I almost did it. Um, they were really sad looking, but I believe I can save everything. No, because if you throw, if I try to throw, th here's the trick. If I try to throw anything away, like two months after the fact. Like cheese? I get amnesia and you were like, where are those things that I used to have? And I, then like, you're just going to make a liar out of me because I got to be like, I don't know. I haven't seen it. No, I believe I can save everything. That's the reason Sean and I are together. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> well then. <laughs> That'll shut you up. That's Enough on fire. Of your stories. Woo. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm super cheap, so I was gonna throw these away, and then I remembered. Oh wait, I'm super cheap. I can save anything. Like that gallon, <laughs> that gallon of milk with that oh recommended expiration date. It's still good. It's still good. Yeah, it's not that lumpy. Kids have it a isn't, cereal. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cottage cheese yet. No big deal. Sean jokes that it's like I grew up in the Depression. Which I don't think is funny at all. Well, I don't want to comment because I still want to sleep tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. 
So this paint gets really good coverage. And I've done a couple of projects where I just use the um, bronze. I actually use bronze and copper together. And um, just gave it a kind of a dark metal finish. These are really pretty on their own too. So I'm just digging it into all these crevices. I don't really care about brush strokes on these or anything like that because I want them to have like that kind of weathered look. So I'm not paying a lot of attention to what I'm doing. Um, now what is this that you're applying? This is bronze patina paint. So this is Dixie Belle patina paint and the color is bronze. And, it and just for giggles, what brush are you using? I'm using the um, uh, flat large brush. Just because it's got a nice long handle on it. Although I'm not even holding it by the handle. I'm holding it by the base. Because I'm used to using the minis that's got that short handle on it. Um, and the reason I chose this brush uh, was mainly because my paint's almost gone. And I don't really want to have to dig my hand down in there so I can just use the handle and get just the bristles down there and I don't have to get my paint all over my hand to get down in my container. So see, there is different times when different brushes come in handy. So apparently I should sleep with one eye open and then the <laughs> comment is thrown out that, oh, I, I get to sleep and you don't. Oh yeah, I never sleep, you guys. In fact, last night was really bad. I was awake all night. So get this. Um, we're, we're in quarantine for coronavirus. If you guys have been following, you know, uh, a couple months ago, I didn't sleep this time because I don't sleep at all. Um, and they came back with the results and I have sleep apnea. And so I need to get like a machine. Guess what? I can't because they're, uh, number one, the doctor's offices are closed unless you really need to go, um, for the coronavirus, which no big deal. It's not like I'm going to die from sleep apnea, right? Um, but the machines are also in short supply because they are one of the, they can help with breathing, which is one of the issues with coronavirus. So right now I'm just SOL, but I can handle that. SOL is just my life motto. You so you, you had a hard time sleeping last night? <laughs> yeah. So I Was it the pillow I put over your head? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Just checking. I don't think you should be joking with me because I'm the one who's up all night. Remember? <laughs> one eye. Yeah. It's my glass eye. Like, like a pirate. Yeah. <laughs> you, should, you should wear those new glasses they just sent you. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. The ones with yeah. no lenses. Nice. Thanks, yeah. genius. Sean, Sean's been waiting for new glasses in the mail, and he got his new glasses. And what's wrong with them? I don't you know. What's wrong with them? don't have any lenses. Yeah. <laughs> genius. Here, we'll ship them to you. Yeah. Oh, that's such a sweet idea. Thank you so much. <laughs> Jack wagons. Yeah. Totally saved us some time there, huh? <laughs> so that's laugh it up all you can do is laugh yep. so I'm almost like I'm scraping the bottom I barely have any paint left in here so I'm going to have to oh so true find out I'm not essential <laughs> <laughs> bada bing bada boom <laughs> uh, wise guy huh yeah you know thankfully I will say that Sean is we are both still working right now <coughs> so he's somewhat essential well I mean, I, you know, we, we always work. From I should home. be working. We always work from home. So aside from wearing masks, we have to go out to the store. This feels like status quo for us. Ashton, you want to go on my shelf? And I just wear a mask to walk through the house. Bronze patina paint, a new one, because I am so out of paint. I will say about an eight ounce. Perfect. Thank you. That was fast. Um, about an eight ounce of this patina paint is is more than enough. I would actually have extra. But when I dipped into this one, it was already partial. Um, so this would be more than enough to do these two planters with. You know why that was fast? Free child labor. <coughs> <coughs> so sorry. Yeah, so I'm scraping the bottom, literally scraping the bottom. I'm gonna open up a new one here in just a second. You just lay this on like a regular paint. It gets really good coverage, goes on really easily. I'm using my nice brushes for it. I'm just gonna brush away all this old little. Sorry guys. I guess I missed some. My kids actually helped me take all this old juniper off. There we go, just sweep that off. It's just like new. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so that one looks 
pretty good. Pretty good. So I'm going to put this aside. Because what the instructions on the patina paint say is that you don't add the spray until your second coat. So this is one that I already painted a little bit earlier tonight. And it's got a first coat on it. And it already looks a million times better. Um, but this is what I'm talking about, where you can leave the bronze patina paint and just its own color without the spray and it actually gives a really nice finish so if you use all the paints regardless can you actually get away with using one particular spray or do you have to use you don't have to use both you get to choose so on my sample board that i did tonight you can see that each you can either use a combination of the two if you want blue and green together but um, each spray has a unique reaction to each paint. So it brings out different colors. Literally, if you use the blue spray, you're gonna get more blues in your reaction, more blues. If you use the green spray, you're gonna get more greens in your reaction. So that's the only difference. You have to look at it at um, what colors do I want to come out in my reaction. Um, the only one that I recommend that you use together are the iron with the green. It just works better together. It doesn't have as much color in it. <clears throat> so you can see I'm getting more reaction here. This is my bronze with the green, bronze with blue. And this is where I spilled paint on it just a few minutes ago. But you can see this is very much more green. This is very much more blue. Here, can you tilt it? It's the sheen of the, right there. there Sorry, you go. they're still a little wet. They've got the spray on them. This is copper with green. This is copper with blue. Now it's slightly more blue. It's more of a teal color, whereas this is more, it looks like um, mint julep. Looks like the paint color mint julep on top of the copper. Whereas here it looks more like, I don't know, more like pure ocean a little bit. Um, and then once again, our iron is just on the slow boat over here. Mill dominating. Yeah, iron <clears throat> just takes a long time to react. You have to be patient with it. You have to walk away from patina paint and leave it as is and let it do its thing. One thing I always tell customers when they um, ask for projects in patina is you have to be okay with knowing that it's a natural reaction and you don't always have a lot of control over it. Um, if you want to use both sprays, does it matter which one you use first? No, no. I would say just spray whichever one you want to be your dominant color. You might want that last. Um, so I'm opening this, but I want to show you guys on top of your patina paint, you can get this kind of crust on the lid here. See how that one is? I'm not going to try to save that at all. I'm going to I'm going to throw that portion away. It's a skin that kind of forms on the top of the paint. It actually protects the paint underneath while it's being stored and shipped. Um, but you don't want to try to save that or stir it back in or anything. That's very normal. It's because it has that actual metal and it gathers on the lid um, and it can be hum uh, affected by humidity and moisture and, um, you know, if you have salt in your air for for example, like if you live out by the beach, you know that your car is weathered a little bit differently than places that don't. Same thing with patina paint. It's sensitive to all those things, that the, all the elements around it. So this is my second coat. And the directions on the patina paint say to apply a base coat, apply one coat underneath, apply your second coat, and while your second coat is wet, that's when you're going to add the sprays. So this is my second coat, and this is the one I'm going to, in fact, add the spray to. And I believe the reason that they recommend that is because if you've got two coats, then you know you're not going to have any bare spots. Now, I have added the spray onto my first coat when I just want it to be a little more sparse, and it works. It just is exactly that. It's a little more sparse. Maureen says that she's been watching you for a little over a year, hey. and her daughter hey, is a furloughed teacher oh. who started painting furniture and is now watching you. Oh, that's so cool. Thank you. Man, God bless the teachers out there. We have three kids, and all of our um, kids and their teachers are doing distance learning right now, which is a challenge. And I just have all the respect in the world for teachers whose job is required to change at a moment's notice, and they're trying to keep up with it. So, um, along with all the moms out there who are now homeschool teachers, too. So we are on spring break actually this week and I am enjoying every second of it. Now can we go back a few steps? If these urns were iron. If they were actually metal, I would want to start with a base of Prime Start. Well, here's the deal. You want to start with Prime Start if it's something you care about underneath. 
If you don't care that it gets rusty underneath your paint and degrades the actual metal, then, you know, for example, like this is a dollar store watering can. If I don't really care if, if in 10 years this gets rusty and has to go in the garbage, I don't have to start with the prime start. But if it's something that I don't want to actually rust through to the can, then you would want to start with a prime start. That's the only difference. Otherwise, you do the same process where you brush on a base coat. So you would do the prime start and then brush your base coat on top of that. And the prime start is kind of an orange color going on. It's actually the color of um, you can see about rusty nail, which is a uh, one of the paint colors in the line. I'm gonna clean this little blotch of paint off my floor here. I actually nice. just scrubbed my floor in this area and got it nice and clean. I'm trying to not get paint on it, which on a side note, you know what I use to scrub my floor? Scrubby soap. Scrubby soap you can get through Dixie Belle. Um, I put my link above in this post. And scrubby soap is amazing. I use it to clean my brushes. I use it to clean, it'll take paint out of my clothes if I accidentally get paint on my clothes. And it cleans the paint off of my floor. Now, by the time you coat this, isn't it going to be dry by the time you go to spray it? Yeah, so it will be partially dry around to the other side. I'm watching it so I can see the sheen on my paint. And once it loses that sheen, I know that it's dry. I'm still not quite there yet as I'm coming around. I'm just now getting to the other side and I can still see the sheen on my paint. But if that's the case, if you're doing a large project, you can spray it in areas and then continue painting. Spray an area, continue painting. So I'm kind of trying to be fast. I don't really need this second coat to have coverage so much as I just want to get it everywhere. Um, because I already got really good coverage with just that first coat. So I have places on these planters, like this one blew over in the wind and it actually cracked it a little bit. But again, I'm putting these outside. I don't really care. Um, I'm not even 100% sure if I'm going to top coat these, actually, when they're done. That was going to be my next question, yeah. if you're going to seal it. I'm not 100% <laughs> sure if I'm going to. So most of the top coats do have a um, reaction with the patina in that they do change the color a little bit. And I don't know if I want that to happen. And since these are going outside, I don't necessarily need to. Number one, top coat stops the chemical reaction. So I can see, I'm just, I just got around to the other side. I'm over painting on the other side right now. My paint is still very much wet. So can this be used on hardware without the spray? Yeah. Uh, yes. And if so, would you still seal it? Uh, it's, it's really going to be personal preference. On hardware, yes, I probably would seal it. I like to seal my hardware with a spray lacquer. It's literally lacquer. It's a hardware store item. And I just gave it a spray with satin lacquer. Okay, so I feel like my coverage is pretty good. Let's talk about putting the sprays on. So one thing, um, when you get your sprays, they come in the container. They come in blue and, gr and green. I'm going to use the blue here tonight. And that's because the, the colors and the reaction, my house is blue, number one. So I took that into consideration. This is going to be, again. This is gonna be my combination right here. This is bronze paint with blue spray. So I want the blues to come out. It's got a little bit of whites in it um, versus the green has more teals in it. I just like this combination a little bit better for the colors of my house. You can see over here, our copper is still reacting and iron. Welcome, welcome to the show, iron. We got nothing. We got nothing. So we're gonna leave iron alone. Now you're Let just it do being its mean. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta be patient with it. So it comes in the container and it comes with the lid on it. So you can take this little black lid off, you wanna save this. And then it comes with the sprayer. So you put the nozzle right into the container and then you can spray it directly onto your project. Um, when you're done using this, you wanna take your sprayer out, flush it with water, and then put this lid back on and store them separately. And the reason you do that is because this sprayer will clog if you leave it in here and full of the chemicals, it will clog and eventually it will degrade the insides of your sprayer. There's metal in here too, um, the little spring and stuff, and it, they clog and it won't work the next time you wanna go use it. So flush it out with water, put that lid back on and store it like this. 
what I'm going to do tonight is I actually took my spray and I put it inside my Dixie Belle Mister bottle. And I'm going to spray it for my Mister. And the reason is just like when you're using a Mister bottle for painting, the reason you use it is because it lays the water out in a fine mist versus the droplets that you can get with a spray nozzle. So um, I want the same thing with my patina spray. It's gonna lay it out in a finer mist than spraying it out of this. So I just took my blue and my green spray. They're literally blue and green. Um, and I'm actually gonna use the blue, but it's gonna be coming out of my mister bottle. When I'm done with this, same thing. I'm gonna put this blue spray back into this container and store it, and I'm gonna flush out my mister bottle. Same thing. Um, so all it being in the mister does is it's gonna lay out a finer mist, and it gives me a little bit more even coverage. So remember we talked about this is a natural chemical reaction that's gonna start happening. So anything that I can do to help make it a little more even Is going to give me the results that I want. And I will post pictures of these when they're done because they're not going to be fully done tonight. Now, when you do this, are you worried about dripping? Uh, no, I'm not. So because these are, again, these are going outside. So if you're doing a, a furniture piece, for example, and you don't want the spray to drip. So let's find a spot where it's dripping here. Um, I would take paper towels and keep paper towels with you. And while you're going, you can just stop the drips. If that's not the look you're going for, you can control it that way. Just stop your dripping. I'm just I, blotting off any areas where it's gathered and it gets starts getting heavy. And I would just control those drips a little bit. I don't care in this case. These are going outside of my house. And I can lay this on as fine as I want or as thick as I want. So Now, is it a noticeable difference if you mix the two colors no, of spray? No, it's really not. So I could do just a really fine mist if I wanted more of my base color to show through. Um, I'm laying it on a little bit heavier. I want that reaction to happen. But if I want my base color to show through, I can just give it a fine mist and then it'll have some of the metallic peeking through and then a little bit of the reaction. Um, I'm trying to keep it nice and even. I can see it going on because I can see the actual blue spray sits on top of the surface and it looks blue. So if tomorrow you come out here and the reaction isn't as severe as you want it to be? I would put another coat of paint on and um, put my spray on again. What if it's too much? That put another coat of paint on, put my spray on again. You can keep doing it until you get the look that you want. So sometimes, and that happens a lot, if you're going for a really specific look, you just don't have that level of control with patina paint. I'm actually gonna take my brush and I'm gonna work in some of these spots where the, that has gathered. And this just kind of works it into the paint a little bit. So if you don't have a lot of control, you can do things like putting it in the mister bottle to try to control the strength of the spray. Um, there's some small things you can do, but you don't have a lot of control. So another thing you can do is to control patina. If it gets to a point that you like the look, you like where it is, you want it to stop. Stop reacting, stop reacting. What are you gonna do? Do you know how you neutralize the reaction? Take your mister bottle with water and spray it with water. Water neutralizes the chemical reaction that's going on. Um, you wanna give it a fine mist, just enough to neutralize that reaction. If it starts dripping, you can take your, from the water, you can take your paper towels and lay it off from the drips again. You don't need a lot. You just need a little bit of water and that will um, neutralize the chemical reaction and stop it from happening. Another thing you can do, if I wake up tomorrow and, let's see, here's an example. This is just a little sample from Dixie Belle. This is an example of the bronze with, uh, what's this, with blue spray. 
If I don't want a lot of this in the morning, I could come back with a wet rag and you can scrub away some of the efflorescence. Now that's the white that comes over the top of it. So you can come scrub that away. Here's another example. So, um, let's see. Can you grab me a, a Mr. Bottle with water in it? I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna scrub this little sample here to take off a little bit of this white. Uh, that's got vinegar in it. Um, one of the ones with the black lid. The black lid one over there. Yeah. Uh, it has barely any water in it though. So when? No, just bring it here. When do you use patina guard? Um, patina guard is a top coat for the patina. Um, it's made just for the patinas. Now, a couple things about the patina guard. So this is water. Really so this is just water. This is just water in a mister bottle. But you can take your water after your patina has reacted. You guys see how this has a lot of the white over the top of it? And if I want to take some of that back, I can scrub that back. Now, my paint's still a little bit wet here. So let's let that dry for a minute. I just took a little bit of water and I scrubbed it back. I just want to take some of that white off the top. You can come back after it's dry and after it has reacted and you can scrub away some of that white. It's still gonna stay down in the crevices where your brush strokes and stuff are, but that's another way you can control your patina reaction. So is the key that it has to be dry? Yeah, because right now it's wet and all I'm doing with the water, it, so if I spray water on it while it's wet, the water neutralizes the reaction, it stops the reaction, okay? So if I liked it right here as it is right now, which I don't, um, I could spray water on it and it would neutralize this reaction. Um, <clears throat> if you spray, if you get water on it after it's wet, you can wipe away. This It forms like a powder over the top. So imagine rust. Rust is a good example because most of us experience rust at home. Um, if you leave your wheelbarrow out in the yard for two years and it gets rained on, it starts to rust. Um, you guys know that when you go to touch it, you get that powder on your fingers, that rust powder. That's on the top of all these. This It makes a powder. And so you can come back and wipe some of that off. If you want to see more of the reaction underneath and get rid of some of this, the white powder that forms over the top, you can wipe it back away after it's dry. So those are a few ways you can play with patina. You can play with it by neutralizing while it's still wet with a mist of water. And you can play with it by scrubbing it back either lightly, if you just want to remove a little bit of it, uh, a lot, if you want to remove a lot of it, um, you can paint over it if you, and start over again. So if tomorrow I don't like this, I can come back and just put another coat of paint on it and another coat of spray and let it go again. So I'm just hitting some of these spots where I feel like it's gotten a little heavy. I want some nice variation in this. I don't want it to be just like solid, one color, so I'm just kind of mixing that spray in. I can see it's already turning right here. Can you see the spot? It's got a lot of white in it. I'm gonna brush some of that back out. Just giving myself a little bit of variation. My brush still has my paint on it. So this is another thing I'm doing to try to control the look of my patina, just give myself a little more variation in my paint finish. So if you back up for a minute, you can see I just put the second coat and the spray on. By no means is this done. Like I said, it's gonna have to wait overnight for me to see the full react reaction. But look at it against just the bare paint. Look how much this is already darkened quite a bit. Um, I can see the, the blue start coming out in my spray might look white on camera, but I can see the little white areas coming out. It's so weird. It also made the topiary green. And oh yeah, it made my topiary grow. <laughs> so you can see right away the reaction starts happening. Now again, I'm going to let this go overnight. Um, two things I could use to top coat this with. Patina Guard is an oil-based um, top coat made just for the patinas. And what the top coat does, um, it also neutralizes the reaction um, and will stop the reaction from happening and then it seals it. But the thing with top coating patina is it does change the colors a little bit in it. 
So you can't, you don't really have control over that. So you have to, you can either do a test area if you want to see what the change looks like. Um, or you can leave it in its natural state. So for example, these aren't going to get a lot of finger wear. They're going to sit outside my house. I don't really care. Um, you can choose how much protection you think whatever you're doing in your patina needs to have. Um, I could use gator hide. Gator hide is another option. So we did my range hood in my house and I sprayed it with gator hide. Um, and that was my top coat. And the gator hide also neutralizes the reaction and then um, seals your paint. Now, if you go to apply a gator hide on there and it's got that ghost, you know, the white on there, white. does it kind of take it down a notch? Um, you should wipe it back before, otherwise you're sealing it underneath your paint, underneath your clear coat. It's so it won't do it any difference? It or will it darken, it will deepen the, the colors in it. It will deepen the colors a little bit, but it's not going to take it off. So if you don't want it to have all that white in there, then wipe it back before you seal it. Um, let's see. And this is that paper towel that had water on it. It's still a little bit wet. Let's see if I hit this with um, patina. It doesn't do you any good to try to accelerate the process with a heat gun. That doesn't do any good. It actually reacts better if you just leave it be and let it do its thing. I'm going to um, put a heat gun on this just to dry it a little bit so I can wipe it back a little bit. Okay, watch, you can see this happening as I'm hitting it with the heat gun. Do you see it turning white? Do you see that dark spot just went away? Watch this one right here. It's dark right now. Try not to burn my fingers. Yeah. Turned it white. Let's see if this one will do it. That one's pretty dry, I think. Those last colors are really catching up. Just so you know. Good for you, bronze. You keep trying. Oh, sorry, iron. This is bronze over here. Yeah, so there you can really see the difference between this is the blue and this is the green spray. This has a finer mist on it, so I've got a little more variation, but there you can see what the fine mist does, where I can get some of the white spots and the green, and then the copper peeks through from underneath. Let me wipe this back a little bit. But if you like the white on there, you can just seal it yeah, and leave you can. it, right? You can. So see how the um, how the water? I just took a damp rag and I wiped it over the top. That's kind of what it's going to do when you seal it too. It's going to darken it a lot. So it's starting to dry again. But you can come and you can scrub it pretty aggressively because once this is dry. It's like scrubbing at rust. If you go to clean that wheelbarrow that you left in the yard, you've got to scrub it to get that rust off. It, this, this is an actual chemical reaction. And then you can see right here where I dripped that paint, it didn't react at all. So I'm scrubbing this pretty aggressively. Now let's dry that again. And it's still got a lot of the white on that. But it did take some off, and I can see a little bit of the dark coming through from underneath. You can use an abrasive, so I'm just using a shop towel, but you could use a, a, uh, like an SOS pad. Or a steel wool, for example. If you want to get rid of some of that white that's there, let's try that again. I mean, right on back. Yeah, but I can see, I can see spots the like here. Tint. Yeah, can yeah. you see like right here? I've taken away some of that white, and I got down to the darker color underneath. So, now, what would happen if you lightly sanded it? Um, you can you grab me a sanding sponge? Yeah, they're in that drawer right behind there, right there. So this is one of the Dixie Belle sanding sponges. These are fairly, um, I'm picking on this one sample right here a lot, huh? You've got to kind of go at it a lot. I'm seeing the, the grain in my wood is coming through. Again, it takes that white off and it gets through to my paint underneath. 
I'm now I'm going to wipe off what I've created on the top. That's really pretty though. Uh, what it would look like sealed is really pretty. I have more variation. So I'm going to hold this up. My brush strokes came through. The grain in my wood came through. See some of that wood grain? Um, that base coat of my bronze came through. So I've got more variation than I did with just the spray on the paint by itself. It also takes away, so this one here, see how it's got that droplet look from the mist, from the mister bottle? This made it maybe more consistent where I don't have this droplet look, the sprayed look, if that makes sense. So you, I mean, you have to, you have to kind of play around with it and don't be afraid to put it on something like this and let it do its thing and then come back. And if I don't like it, I'm just going to scrub it, put another coat on, play around with your patina, um, to get the look that you're after, but also be flexible with yourself and knowing that you just don't have as much control over it as you do with some of the other paints. It's a really cool look, but it's very authentic um, and very natural. So this one is the one we painted when I first started and I'm gonna come back and start adding my second coat to this one because it's getting dry. I've still got some moisture in the crevices. I can see wet paint in my crevices. Um, but for the most part, it's starting to dry. So it's just a cool product because once you um, once you figure out how to control a little, a little bit using those methods, either scrubbing it back or um, adding water once you like the look. If I like this look right now, I could come back and I can wipe some of these spots to get rid of where the blue is gathering. You can really play around with it. I'm just using a shop towel and wiping it back a little bit because I do want a little bit of that bronze to show through, the, just the metallic paint, not the reaction. And I'll probably add a little bit of gilding waxes to these on some of the high points because they do have a cool, um, a cool little motif right here that I can accentuate with some gilding waxes. I could dry brush a little bit of white over the top of this just to catch the high points on that. You guys want to do that? That would be kind of pretty. Let's put a, a little bit of dry brush on top of that. Okay, so I like to use a chip brush when I'm dry brushing and that's because the bristles are a little bit sparse and they have a lot of texture to them. And that's what we want. We want texture and I don't want densely packed bristles. So this is Dixie Belle Drop Cloth. I'm just gonna tip my bristles in here. Tip means just the tips of them, just the tips of my bristles. So there's, I mean, barely any paint and even that I'm gonna lay off. That's about what I want on there. You guys see there's barely any paint on that. And then if I hit this, and then my paint's still a little bit wet, but I can come back and kind of hit this with a dry brush and it'll start picking up some of the details. Very little paint on my brush. Ideally, you'd wait till your paint is dry to do this. And I'm just flicking those tips at the high points on my moldings. And it just kind of softens them a little bit. This is how you get some of those like aged stone looks. Do these down here. And I'll go vertically and horizontally. So if you don't top coat it, and these are outside the house and weather hits it, rain, mm -hmm. does it wash it off? Nope, it does not. So you saw how hard I had to scrub at that. Patina. I don't really want to be doing this right now because my paint's still a little bit wet. You can see I can just kind of highlight some of these ridges and really bring out some of these moldings on this piece. 
just using a chip brush and a little bit of a lighter paint color. Um, no, you guys saw how hard I had to scrub at that patina sample just to make any difference in it. It's not going to come off. It's not. It's going to continue to weather. It might get a little bit dirty. Um, I could still come back and hose it off every year just to rinse it off if I want. But other than that, it's going to sit outside and just continue to weather a little bit. And I want these to have a weathered look. They're going to look like they're outside metal containers in front of my house. So ignore all this right here. Once I finish putting the greenery around this, you won't see. This is the um, the foam that they're packed into the urns with. But I think they're going to be pretty when I'm done. So that's patina paint, you guys. It's going to keep reacting. Let's look one more time at our sample board. Good for you, Iron. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give it up really on it. It really does take the longest for the iron to react. But this in the so this is the iron over here. Got a little spot of rust right here. Can you guys see this little spot of rust? This is the iron with hey, the I'm green. I'm really focusing on yeah, that. This little guy right here. Um, you get the most reaction in iron with green. That's when you get these rich oranges over here. I'm not going to get any oranges. It's going to stay in the grays. Copper with um, blue and copper with green. And then bronze with blue and bronze with green. This is the one we scrubbed at quite a bit. So it's got a little bit more even look and a little bit more variation. But you can see they all produce a little bit different. And I, I like how some of the metal shows through underneath. It's got that nice metallic look. So those are my samples there. But I'm going to keep working on these. I will get pictures of them up when they're all done and you guys will be able to see what the finished result is. That is patina paint. I put my link above in the post, you guys. If you guys are going to make a purchase, I get a small percentage of any purchases made through there. Um, that supports my small business um, and helps me be motivated to make videos with good content, put out good content for you guys. So I always appreciate using my affiliate link in the post. You can also use that link to find your local retailer. Um, a lot of the shops are closed right now, but the Dixie Bell retailers are out doing deliveries for you guys. They're still shipping from their shops. Um, a lot of them will do uh, porch pickup for you guys. So if you have a retailer in your area, support them by um, looking, clicking that link and looking for your local retailer there too. So you guys, I paint with you guys every Thursday. Come back next week. We'll paint again. Um, but thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you.